clinical picture of a fracture. Um, first of all, the fracture may uh, have a characteristic incidence, like example fracture neck of femur or coolis fracture, which uh, coolis fracture is fracture distal inch of radius, usually occur in old age. Uh, sure, there is characteristic history. Uh, usually, there is history of trauma, and we should ask about the nature and the time of the trauma. Uh, and after trauma, there is severe pain and inability to move the part. If uh, there is fracture, if you ask the patient to move the part, never. The patient said, I can't, I can't move the part. Um, examination, general examination and the local examination. Examination, remember A, B, C, D. What is the, the A, B? We should examine and confirm patent airway and confirm free breathing. Airway and the breathing, A, B. And the C, we should examine the patient for manifestations of shock and the hemorrhage. C is a circulation, hemorrhage and shock. And the D is disability. We should examine the patient from here to toe to exclude associated injuries like in fracture spine examine for a spinal cord injury or in fracture pelvis examine for manifestations of rupture bladder or urethra visceral injury um, local examination local examination we should examine the two limbs by examination should be bilateral and to compare both sides the most important diagnostic feature for fracture is this what is this? This is hand, and this is a forearm. Is this is a normal forearm? Never. Just spotting. This here is a spot diagnosis is deformity, and here sure there is fracture both bones of forearm radius and ulna. Deformity is the most important thing in diagnosis of fracture. Sure, there is swelling. Swelling due to edema, hematoma, bone displacement. During bulbation, there is tenderness over the fracture. And measure the length of the limb. There may be length discrepancy, shortening or lengthening of the affected limb. And this is the second thing characteristic for fracture or dislocation. Shortening or lengthening of the limb. Therefore, deformity and length discrepancy are the two characteristic signs of uh, fractures or dislocation. We should uh, examine the skin. Why? For presence of wound, bruises, hematoma. Um, it is more important than diagnosis of the fracture is examination of arterial pulsation in the distal part of the limb, like in this example, injury at the ankle, bulbate the dorsalis beads pulsation to exclude associated arterial injury. Examine the sensation and the motor examination to exclude associated nerve injury. And diagnosis of vascular injury and nerve injury is more important than diagnosis of the fracture. Um, examine the related joints. Examine the nearby joint. <laughs> Why? 
to avoid missing associated injuries of the joint, like associated dislocation. Uh, it is characteristic and very diagnostic for any fracture is presence of crepitus and abnormal movements. <coughs> What's crepitus? If you hold the two bone fragment and move the two bone fragment, the two bone fragment during movement of the two bone fragment, you feel you feel crepitus and abnormal movement of the bone. This is diagnostic, but never, never try to do it in your breaths because during performation performance of this sign during moment of bone fragment you will injury the soft tissue you will injury the surrounding vessels or nerves therefore vascular injury and the nerve injury may be reduced by the doctor if try to show crepitus or abnormal movement therefore never try to perform these signs in your practice um, measurements measurements and the special tests may be present and characteristic for some uh, fractures and uh, finally uh, and clinically the most characteristic diagnostic signs for fractures are deformity and the lens discrepancy and sure crepitus and abnormal movement but never try to perform these signs uh, investigations the most important investigations is belain x-ray the most important investigation is belain x-ray and remember always a rule of two what are the rule of two um, the brain x-ray should be performed at least two times and two joints and two views we should take anthroposterior and the lateral view at least because the fracture may be appear in one view and doesn't appear in the other view therefore at least anthroposterior and the lateral view and the x-ray film should show the joint above and joint below to diagnose fracture dislocations and the x-ray is done at least two times one time for diagnosis to show the fracture and show the displacement and the deformity then when you show the deformity and this show the diagnosis of the fracture the patient enters the theater and we correct the fracture according to the, according to the deformity in the x-ray after correction of deformity and the blaster cast take another x-ray to ensure complete correction of the fracture and the proper treatment of the fracture uh, there may be a third time uh, for the x-ray uh, can be added to take another x-ray for the third time after diagnosis and after treatment to take a third x-ray before removal of the blaster cast to ensure complete union and the healing of the fracture before removal of the blaster cast this is a clinical picture and investigation of any fracture MRI and CT scan may be added in the investigation but not routine why CT scan is added to evaluate intra-articular fracture or fracture spine or fracture pelvis MRI may be added to an x-ray especially to diagnose spinal cord injury or in case of knee injury to diagnose meniscus tear or ligament injury in case of injuries of the knee 
but CT scan and the MRI not done as a routine, done in special circumstances only, especially in fracture spine, pelvis, uh, knee lesions, uh, fracture spine to diagnose a spinal cord injury. Um, thank you for good listening and good luck.